straight to the chase here. The West Ham world has been rocked, maybe rocked, let's say slightly surprised by the news that Jeremy Agakia's leaving when his contract finishes on June the 30th. Now, I'm going to read the article from Carrot and Hugh right now. Gio's been sort of, Gio's out and about. He's up to no good at the moment. We've managed to get him um, via the interweb. So we're going to get his thoughts on it in a moment. But the article is as such. It says, promising Hammers right back, Jeremy Ngaki has refused to sign a new deal with the club and will walk away from the London Stadium on June 30th. Everybody at the club feels badly let down by the 19-year-old's decision under the guidance of his agent, David Dixon. Um, it says, basically, it goes on to say that the, they didn't give their decision until uh, last night. However, the decision does clear the way for another brilliant prospect, Ben Johnson, to challenge if fit and Ryan Fredericks is there. So it, the, the article saying that we do have plenty of cover at right back. They, as, as ever, the devil is in the detail, which goes on to say the Hammers have made various offers to Ngakia, as they had done with Johnson and Grady Diangana before him, but eventually the youngster decided to reject them through Dixon. So it's saying that he didn't have direct contact with the club, which I guess would be pretty impossible anyway at the moment due to the um, social distancing restrictions. Um, so it's saying the agent contacted the club to notify them that he wouldn't be signing the extension. Uh, it goes on to say it will come as no surprise now, of course, the player um, looks to join a new club in the near future. It means, of course, that he will not be around to complete the renewal of the season, which is scheduled to kick off again on June the 12th or the 19th, which seems to be harsh. Um, a, a harsh way to conduct their business. Geo, not a surprise though, mate, right? Um, it is a little bit. I thought, I, I know he was sort of debating where to re-sign a new deal and stuff. We, just, we poo-pooed it a couple of weeks ago. We made a joke about it almost. Um, that it almost wasn't a big deal. I was expect, I was fully expecting him to sign a new deal, to be honest with you, Gons. I thought it was just about the right amount of money, whatever that is. And I thought, we, I, I generally believed... 90%, this is how generally surprised I am, I was 90% confident he would have signed a new deal. Because why wouldn't he? We've just given him game time in the Premier League. He's only played, what, three appearances? It's not loads. Um, so I'm shocked, actually, that he's leaving. Yeah, I, so you obviously thought it was a, a negotiating tactic. Yeah, I thought it was a money thing. I thought it was just sort a of case of he wants a lot of money, we don't want to give him a lot of money. Meet in the middle somewhere. A bit like we Oxford again, Declan Rice again, but I thought just like those deals, they got done eventually and I thought Ngakia would be the same um, I'm surprised, I'm very surprised actually Well, I've, I mean, I probably should say there's no, I've not actually spoken to anyone I've not spoken to Hugh, I've not spoken to Sean, but there's no way they've run this story without clarifying it with the club no way whatsoever, so um, we can certainly, whilst I, I wouldn't rule out him staying I would certainly you know, I'd, I'd place I'd place a bet on that being the case at the close of business yesterday that the deal was rejected, and he was going to leave. Obviously, that throws it. I'll give my opinion in a second, but I, I hadn't even thought of what it said at the end of the article, which was he's not going to complete the rest of the season. I mean, that's a really strange thing. Normally, you would just if you were going to walk away and not sign a new contract, you would have completed the season. But in essence, he's he's walking away mid-season, if you like. Yeah. What's worse is that this is where we, there should have been a clue for us. Is he back in training? You have to assume he's not. Because you said about how the club have had no contact with him. That would insinuate he's not at training. But we got told last week all players turned up for training that were expected. Now, that's the key word. We've missed that. The key words are as expected. That would mean they didn't expect Jeremy Ngakia to come back. Now, he might be there. We don't know. He might be there. But given that his agent's the one that's delivering the bad news rather than the player himself, we'd insinuate that Ngaki is not actually even in training at the minute, which is bad. And, you know, he's not coming back for the season. I'm not that confident David Moyes would have played him, truth be told. If we had a game this Saturday, I think he might have opted for Ryan Fredericks anyway. But to not have the option of Jeremy Ngakia is a blow to us. There are still worse clubs out there. Bournemouth has got worse. Ryan Fraser in particular is causing them a headache. So there are a lot worst teams affected out there. We won't be the only one. I'd be surprised if no team, um, sorry, I wouldn't be surprised if every team is impacted in some way with players' contracts. But it, I'm, not, I'm more concerned about next season and the season after and the season after rather than the remaining of this season, if, if you like, in terms of Jeremy and Gakia. It's, it's a huge, huge blow. You said it's rocked West Ham. It has, it's rocked me, Gonzo. It generally has rocked me. 
Yeah, I, I think this is this is an odd one, and this is a sort of tactic that I I would understand under normal circumstances. I can see this. We know that players can. Look, loyalty is has gone in football to to a large extent. Not everybody, but you can understand that, and I can understand this tactic pre-pandemic. But now I I actually look at the advice his agent might be giving him, and I don't just say this as a as a West Ham fan because I I actually have got quite a lot of faith. I think it's a position we're strong in. I'm not saying we've got world class players there, but Frederick's okay. I think Ben Johnson is is coming through, and and. He may well be the better option there anyway. I do think Agaki only got his chance because those two weren't available. But he is somebody, as you say, that's only played a handful of games. He's not an established first-team regular. And I just wonder about the advice he's getting from his agent. Because unless he is absolutely sure, nailed on, to go and sign a five-year contract with an established Premier League club that's going to net him... I don't know, 20, 25 grand a week. That's one hell of a risk. A risk I would understand under normal circumstances. But at the moment, I can't see too many clubs being able to offer out massive amounts of money on long-term contracts. And I just look at his agent and think, well, actually, any a job is good a good thing to have at the moment. If you can get a ratcheted contract, and I'm, I'm quite sure that the contract would have been something like Whatever, I don't know. Eight thousand pounds a week now. Um ten, fifteen grand for every first team appearance, and then after after fifty games or after a season we put it up. I've no doubt that it was an incentivized contract that had he have done well and become our established right back in, you know, over the next two or three years, he probably would have been on the same sort of money Declan Rice is on. And I think with that in mind, you have gotta try and back yourself and and give yourself a job. And I, I, I just wonder exactly what he's doing. I'm, I'm, on this one, Gio, I know I was a little bit critical of the club um, with the with the way they announced the, the ticket refunds for the season tickets. But I would back the club on this one because we don't know what income we've got coming in. We can't just start throwing out big contracts to players that we A, we can't afford, or, or, or two, we don't know that we can afford. We don't even know if the Premier League... Um, if the if BT and Sky and those sorts of people are going to start basically fining us for not getting the season back on track, so we've got no season ticket, we've got no um, we've got a guaranteed fans coming in, the sponsorship we've already lost one sponsor. The the club have got to cut their cloth and be realistic and act within the situation with Rim, but I feel his agent has got a duty to do that as well. I think it depends on the the offer though from the club. Um... If you said eight grand, I'd like to think it'd be more than that because if it is on eight grand and we get relegated, it goes down to four grand, and there's a there's a massive oper- there's a massive chance we do get relegated, and therefore his contract, I would almost forgive Ngaki if he's looking at it as a fifty percent off contract because if he's tying himself down for three four years and we go down, he's got four years on. I don't want to say pittance, but for a, a first choice right back, it would be not enough money. So I don't know if that's come into it. I think you have to bring that into the equation, the probability of getting relegated. I'd like to think there's maybe two contract offers there, or he doesn't have the 50% relegation thing in there. He goes it. But it depends on what the club have offered, because I think the club need to tie him down. They needed to tie him down, because we've now got a massive issue here. Because we were going into this summer, Zabaleta's leaving, so you're already freeing up 60, 000, 60 70, £80,000 pounds a week on the right-back spot. So all we're not asking is for you to allocate a 10%, 15% of that to Jeremy and Gakia, and you're replacing Zabaleta with someone on 15 grand a week. So it's, it's, a, it's a bargain for replacing Zabaleta. We don't worry about the right back. We've got Ngakia, Johnson, Fredericks. We're well established. If anything, push comes to shove, you could probably sell one of them and still get away with it. You'd still be well packed out in that position. Now, with Zabaleta going and Ngakia going, I think right back becomes an issue already because I am not confident in Fredericks as our first choice right back at West Ham. I think he's a good backup, a good squad third. Have him around because I don't think what you'd get for him is a few million. I don't think it's worth it. I think you're better keeping him. But now the question is, how much is it going to cost to replace Ngakia? You're looking at 20 million for a right back. And I'm not saying of Ngakia's ability, but for someone to play right back, first choice is 20 million. We don't have that. This is this could be a very expensive mis- mistake for West Ham. Um, 
it, it all depends on what we've offered him. And it says we've offered him multiple contracts. So this isn't, he's turned down one, let's go again. This sounds like this is the third or fourth deal on the table and he's rejected it. So I, I'm going to err on the side of caution like you are in the inside of the club here and suggest that we have made what we feel to be comfortable offers for someone that's played a handful of penalty games. But it's disappointing to see us not be able to tie him down. Um, it should never have got to this point. It should never no. have got to the end of May. This should have been done. As soon as he made his first team appearance for West Ham, and we thought, oh, hello, this boy's looking... And he makes his second appearance. We should have had him in contract negotiations done, sorted. Um, it's a huge, huge blow. The only, the only <laughs> small silver lining is we get compensation, but only if he goes to an English club. Yeah, well, I, I don't know what we did. And obviously, I plucked eight grand out of thin air and you plucked 15 yeah. grand out of it. I mean, we could have offered him. Well, I doubt we have offered him 20 grand, to be fair. But I, so I think 15 grand is, is not a bad guess. You just wonder if he is pitching it as his agent is saying, well, hold on, you're a first team regular. It's it's all about what advice um, he's getting now. And he may well have been. You don't know. The club may well have turned around to him and he made a couple of appearances, say, look, we're going to. We're going to look to if you, you know, if you establish yourself in the first team or you carry on playing some games, we're going to look to up your contract. I would imagine with only a year left or a few months left, he probably already was in yeah. contract negotiations. But I wouldn't be surprised if at that point he changed his agent. And it looks like he, I think he's changed his agent. I might be wrong, but I think that's that seems to be um, the story there. So maybe he gets into the first team, changes his agent. I do think, I, I, I sort of, I do agree with what you're saying about the risk of, of right back. Um, of having to buy one, but I, I think the risk is more with him. I think the risk is bigger to him. There is no guarantee for him, because we do already have a really good young right back. He was just injured, you know, and and one that can play at left back as well. The trouble is that I see from Ngakia's point of view is there is no guarantee that any of these young players will have an established Premier League career. No. Um, I, I've seen a lot. I've seen enough of these players. Some bounce back, uh, Junior Stanislas. But there's also a Carl Reed or a Zavon Hines for, for any one of these guys or, or a Freddie Sears who who don't quite make it at, at that top level. And I just wonder for him, it might well be the wrong decision at the wrong time when there's a lot of instability around football. Obviously, there'll be people saying, yeah, you would say that you're a West Ham fan, you want him to stay. And yes, that's true. Um We'll, we'll wait and see. Only history will show whether he's received good advice or not now. Um, maybe he proves the wrong. Maybe, maybe he goes and becomes Manchester United's right back for the next... Well, actually, he won't get past um, Wemba Sakharelli, but you know what I mean. Um, he might go on and be right, permanent right back at a big club, but he, he might just go and, and be and also ran a championship club or something like that. It's, it's, it's a big decision for him. He's maybe already been tapped up. He yep. maybe already knows exactly where he's going. Um, at this period... Everybody's been trying to conduct business. I know, I know, I know everyone's skint at the minute, but this is even this is actually why Ngakia becomes extremely attractive to other Premier League clubs. Maybe someone like Bournemouth, who maybe have an issue at right back, because we'd mind a new right back. You've got Jeremy Ngakia, who initially he's free. You've got to sort out the compensation in court, but it won't be much. And actually, Ngakia probably suits Bournemouth down to the ground, young English and stuff, and that, it, very, it very much is. I would be surprised if almost had a word with the agent. I said, look, tell him to bin off anything from West Ham. We've got this is what we're going to offer him. We just can't offer him it yet. Um, drank it out as long as possible. Because I, I do find it, it is a sheer coincidence, but I do find it maybe convenient that this has come out after they've gone back to training. So I'm going to I am gonna take a guess here. I don't know this. This is my assumption, my own guess. He's not gone back to training. That's my guess. My guess is he's not there because... Why would he go back if he's intending on leaving? If he's not going to be playing football for us when the season gets up and running, why would he be at training? I'm going to assume he's possibly not there. Um, so I don't know. Maybe he thinks he's going to. He's more likely to get first choice football. I think Fredericks will start on our first game. Regardless. Maybe Jeremy and Gakia generally thinks that as well. Yeah, maybe he, yeah. The, the, the vibe he's getting from the club is I'm a bit part player and I might get a chance. I don't know. We don't know. It's just, it's bad news. So this is not good. It's not no, no, good no, 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 no. In any, in any way, because we've now got an issue of right back as far as I'm concerned. I know we've got Fredericks and Johnson. That does not fill me with confidence, Gonzo. I not, I was confident with Ngakia, Johnson and Fredericks. Because you've got three. If one's in, out for me, you get the other one in. With Fredericks and Johnson, I'm not really. Um, this is, oh, it's so disappointing because we were almost, 
everyone's quite unison on this on and that is this is a summer to take advantage of your academy from now on you really need your academy to start producing the goods we've got Jamie Ngakia is the academy. He's been with us since, what, he's 11 years old? I think he's mm. been at the club for eight years now. He's the one player that is coming into the first team. You know, forget Dean Gannon and Cullen. They've almost had a chance and been told, yeah. oh, you, you need to go away. Jamie Ngakia's had his chance and go, OK, this guy's got it. He's the perfect example. We've lost him. And he's got through our choice. I think this is what annoys me more. West Ham haven't decided to release him. We haven't decided to sell him. Actually, the, the player has the power here. And that means that we, as a football club, are, are missing out. And that's so disheartening, actually. This is really demotivating me, actually. Um, it's not yeah. Good. No, it, it wasn't. <clears throat> excuse me, it wasn't good news. But when I recently did the article about, I forget his second name, Gonzalo, was whatever his name was, the right back at River Plate. I, if you look back on our video, I, I discuss. Ngakia in particular and I was far from convinced you'll see in that that I thought he was going to be our established right back um my gut I mean this is not good news but my gut does sort of tell me it's a far bigger risk for him than it is for West Ham I I I I I, yeah I mean I listen we might be wrong hopefully I do like him he's a he's a decent he looks like he might be a decent prospect but he's not an established first team player and 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 I, and I think I just think there's, there's a contract, whatever it might have been, may well have reflected that, and maybe he and his agent are pitching it as him being an established first team player. I hope he gets sorted. I hope he signs a deal. I hope these are just tactics. And um, but again, if I look at my gut, my gut sort of tells me he's off. It it gives your your right back video. It gives that rumor even more credibility now. Yeah. Now that this has come out and. You'd have to assume for this to get leaked, and I say leaked, the club have chosen to tell Clive and Hugh today about the news. They've yep. decided we want to get this news out there. Okay, so the club have decided to leak this, but they can't do it themselves, so they've given it to Clive and Hugh. This is where I think the club are quite clever sometimes in working the fan media, and it's, it's a very useful tool to do because you've you've just turned what they've just done, and today what they've just done is turn the fan base against Jeremy and Gakia. The club have controlled the narrative which is his agent. His agent is the one at fault here. He's had good offers. He's not signing it. Jeremy and Gacky is the problem. So the club have controlled the narrative from the get-go, which is important from a club's PR perspective. It's the right thing to do. It's a clever thing to do. Um, it's possibly throwing Ngaki on the, the bus a little bit, but if he's not going to be a West Ham player, then sod it, I guess. They obviously feel they've done enough. They've offered him good terms, and there's a lot more evidence to suggest that what you're doing, what you're saying is that he's going to leave West Ham and not have a better career than he would have if he stayed. Reese Oxford's the most current one I can think of. There's hardly any success stories that's left West Ham yeah, and gone yeah. on to do better. There's hardly any. Um, I can't even think of one, to be honest with you. Well, I, I, I can think of a couple, but uh, they left young. I mean, John Terry, Liam Ridgewell, people like that. But yeah, yeah. they left at 14, 15, something like that, you know. Yeah, and the other ones left for money. In, mm, in terms yeah. of, like, you know, Lampard and that left for money. But in terms of walking out at the end of your contract... Yeah. I can't really think of any. Um, the small, like I said, the small thing is because he's had a few games in the Premier League, because he was our right back when the season stopped, we pushed the compensation up. Should he go to an English club, we will get a few million for him. Um, not much, a couple of million. It's, it's not much, but with this compensation things, usually there's a, a sell-on fee put in there yeah. as well. Yeah. So when we signed, when Robert Hall, I remember when Rob Hall left West Ham went to Bolton. Part of the condition was if bought and sell and West Ham get 20% of fee. So 20% seems to be the rule of thumb as well. So that happens if Jeremy and Gaffey goes to the Premier League club and moves on for 20 million in the future, West Ham will, will get 4 million of that. So I guess it's small things, but that's what we've got to do now. Now we've got to prepare for without Jeremy and Gaffey. The only good thing is he's only had three appearances and not 30 because that would be a hell of a lot of a. Oh, yeah. A, a bigger loss. Um, it's just disheartening. It, it really is. I was looking forward to seeing him develop at West Ham, mm. and that's we're not going to see that anymore. But it, it's the perfect opportunity for Ben Johnson now. Jeremy Ngakia was in his way for progress. He's not now. So he's our second choice right back. Zach Blatt has gone, Ngakia has gone. Ben Johnson is now our second choice right back. He was fourth a month ago. Now he's um, now he's second choice. Yeah. So there's winners and losers. No. 
bad news. Still a little bit for the story to run. Geo, thank you. It looks a bit windy up there, mate. Thank you for uh, for. I'm sorry for interrupting you, really. That's all right. I don't mind. I quite enjoy it. I quite enjoyed it. Good talk. Good man. Right. Get back out of that wind. Thank you for joining us. If you haven't checked out our quiz from last night, dodgy presenter. Um, somebody cheating. Can tell Len cheating on the quiz? Um, somebody was, was wronged. Sure. We was, de- was, de- was denied half a point. I'll say no more. As Geo likes to say, subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you for joining us. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the Jeremy and Gakia situation.